Uh, yes, this is, um, this is a double act. We're going to do five minutes each. It's principally to allow Michaela to talk about CIFA Deutschland, but I'm just going to give a general CIFA update first and steal all of Michaela's time. Because um, that's what we do. Over the last year, then, um, CIFA has been continuing to develop its partnerships with other organisations in the sector. The RPA, Jeff, talked to you about earlier on, uh, so I will say no more about that. IAI, represented here today by Chelsea. Um, the Memorandum of Understanding has lapsed with the IAI at the moment, but we are still working together on alignment of standards. The European Association of Archaeologists you may have heard of, and Sophie spoke about uh, them earlier, and indeed we had a liaison meeting at 8 o'clock this morning, hence my late arrival. And we also have a Memorandum of Understanding with Dave Goof, um, part of the organisers of today. Um, I think one of the biggest initiatives we have running this year is Chartered Archaeologist. Kate is running that programme. It's immensely complicated and I'm going to make it sound easy, um, but it's not. Uh, charter, the, the chartered something, chartered professionals, it's an internationally recognised brand. It's externally verified. It is the winning the most well-known mark of professionalism. We want to use it to establish parity with other chartered professions, to make people realise that archaeology is as important and uh, respected a profession as many of the others that we work with. It's about enhancing confidence from clients and the public. And going back to Kate's point in her presentation earlier on, it's about making sure that everybody knows that as professionals we are working in the public interest. And it's also to make the profession of archaeology more attractive, so that you can go all the way to the, to the top to being chartered archaeologist. So, um, interestingly, the criteria for chartered archaeologists that we're proposing are the same as for MCFA, but the evidence requirements are different. The same process is required for assessing your technical archaeological abilities, which I won't go into, you, you, you know about them, but more work is going to go into, we propose, examining ethical ability, see how people cope with those ethical conundra that so often trip archaeologists up. And that will be in the form of uh, an interview with a panel, a bit like a job interview. And in some way, chartered archaeologists will be a time-limited accreditation. Details are still under discussion. There's a timetable. We're discussing it now with the, um, with a, a, the CIFA membership. We're also consulting. Kate is consulting with the Privy Council office. Now, that's a peculiar UK thing, the Privy Council, and it's very hard to explain. I think if I just said it's a non-governmental service supporting the head of state, that might, it would be inaccurate, but it might be helpful. Um, formal consultation on the detailed criteria will have uh, been re revised, um, sorry, consultation on the criteria now, formal consultation on the documents that uh, encapsulate those criteria will take place over the winter. We'll have a meeting in the spring at the CIFA conference, and if that uh, if the proposal is approved there, it will go through to the Privy Council um, to be decided on behalf of the Queen. Um, yeah, there's a lot of people working for, with CIFA, and they're doing lots of things. Good. Um, just a few facts and figures. Um, as of last week, uh, 2,880 CIFA professionals that in the last year is a 15% increase in the number of accredited um, CIFA professionals. Uh, 947 affiliates and students, which all adds up to 3,827 members. 
the bullet point not on the slide says 40 countries, 40 different countries where those three H27 are. 79 registered organizations. Uh, we talked about professional conduct processes earlier on. Uh, 15 complaints about our, about our members, or about our accredited professionals and about registered organizations led to six formal investigations. Um, what else? Yes, 28 inspections of registered organizations which resulted in three conditions and 62 recommendations. Uh, one of those conditions not being met led to removal of an organization from the register. Uh, we published some stuff, we've done some seminars. Uh, consultation responses, Ken is quite right. Reactive advocacy is not the best way forward. Much better to be influencing the consultations coming out rather than responding to them, but you can't count those. I can count these, there's 46. Um, and 82% of job advertisements in the UK now specifying CFA accreditation either is necessary or more likely desirable. Uh, and we have 20 groups in CFA. 16 of them are topic or subject based, which we call special interest groups. Four are area groups. And the most recent of those is. <laughs> <laughs> It is CIFA Deutschland. So I just want to quickly tell you something about what happened in Germany and why we started with CIFA. And last year, in the beginning, we had a big discussion about do we need a professional association in Germany because uh, there are things that are not going quite well and maybe we need something more than the organizations we have in the moment. And while we had this discussion, CIFA offered us to support a German branch of CIFA. And this was in June 2017, so roughly a year ago. In July, we then had a big meeting of archaeologists in Mainz, and there we had an evening event where CIFA again said, hey, we want to support you if you want to have our system and try to adopt it in Germany. And uh, they also announced me as coordinator, and so this was when we started. Quite quickly, we wrote our first letter to members to be, so to inform them what we are going to do, why we are here, what CIFA is, what the goals are, and that it is not an English intrusion. They don't want to conquer Germany. No, they want to help us, and they give us information with which we can work. They have papers, they have everything ready, and we can try to adjust it. We also had our logo finished, which was really good, because we need that to have a proper communication. We had a website and a Wikipedia article, which is really important in Germany too, because Wikipedia is used a lot. So we made this. In September, we already had the documents for accreditation for individuals translated and online, which was a crucial part, because we need that in a language that people can understand. It's a difficult process to do it in a different language. It just doesn't work. We started with that, and we needed, of course, the matrix of competences, which was translated then, too. This is our logo, look at that, same color. Then we went on in November. We published an article, Gary and I, and this was to promote CIFA in Germany so the people know what we are doing, because there was a lot of discussion going on. They're coming here, they're just placing their stuff in Germany and we have to use it and have no way to talk about that. We also had our first meeting of our committee. We had enough members then and handed on the proposal to be officially recognized as area group by CIFA. In January, we started our first working group, which was the working group for ROs, because we already had the documents for the individuals translated, but we need also to have the organizations, but the German system is completely different, so we have to change a lot of things, do amendments, and so this was the first important thing we started, and it's still ongoing, so we're not finished with that one. We also translated the Code of Conduct, which was important too, because people who are accredited sign up to that, so they should read it in their own language. In February, we were recognized as area group, which was important for us because now we are officially representing. 
and we started our working group coaching for freelancers because this was a second big wish in Germany that we need more information for freelancers about contracts, about working conditions, what they need to do. So we started that and we added the, the um, templates for students and affiliates even in German. Then in March this year we were present at a big meeting of German archaeologists again which was really important for us because we got a lot of input what they fear, what they want, what German archaeologists need, where there are difficulties, with whom we can work together, who is more critic to us. So this was really helpful. We also started our working group training professions which was the next big wish we got from this <coughs> meeting. They said well we have no training for archaeologists in Germany. We don't have anything, we just have university, but what about the digging sector? So we started that working group, but this is really just starting, so there we are arranging what we are going to do. In May we had our first AGM in Munich, so we are completely set up, we had our elections, we have our committee, we have what our members want us to do, so now we can really work for them and go farther than we could before when we were not elected. We also had the ratification of the MOU with Deguf, where we were really happy to have that, because we need it in the German political system to stay clear what is Deguf, what is CIFA. We're working close together, but we're different. So starting that. And in June, we put on, on the homepage an FAQ, because there are so many questions repeated. What are you doing? Why are you here? What is the benefits for us? So we made that and we made a print version so people can use that in discussions too. In July, we started to send our first newsletter. The newsletter is not monthly, it's based on topics. So things that people ask us, where we then see, okay, there is a need of information and we try to get more information out. With that newsletter, And we have about 100 persons who are getting the newsletter in the moment. They're not all members, but they get the information, so we're trying to spread more information in Germany. In August, we could, could put our group constitution online, which is also important because now the legal status of CIFA Deutschland in Deutschland is clear. Then just some information about our members. You can see we are close to, to 60 members in the moment, and uh, most of them are accredited, so this is why we're not uh, growing that fast, but it's quite fast for that we started a year ago and people need time to do their accreditation. Uh, I can see some faces around here which are still working on that. So we're hoping to get more members when they are finished. And for the future, we really hope that we can make the situation, the working conditions, the position of archaeology in Germany better by using all the knowledge that CIFA can provide and by working together with all the groups we heard of today. So yeah, fingers crossed for the future and we hope we can proceed from there. Thank you.